very sad to leave. And good afternoon. This is Sheba Russell from the Fox 29 newsroom. We are interrupting programming here uh, with some details on a shooting at the end of a Ramadan event in West Philadelphia, multiple people shot from what we can understand here. This is at the corner of 47th and Girard Avenue. You can see a lot of activity there on the ground, multiple people just standing around police activity as well. We understand this happened right around 2.30 this afternoon. Again, multiple people shot. At this point, it is not clear how many people were shot. The number of victims have ranged from two to we're still trying to get those numbers here. Here. Multiple people detained. Several firearms uh, went off during this exchange at the end of this Ramadan event. We understand it's an Eid event. Now, several people have been detained again, and at one point we heard about a thousand people had been running for their lives from this event. Children there as well. Uh, we're trying to take a closer look here at what's going on, on the ground. You can see multiple police vehicles. Again, this is in West Philadelphia, 47th and Girard. Our Steve Keeley has been working to gather some details for us. Steve, are you there? This is involving several blocks because this was a massive event. It wasn't quite over. It was scheduled to go from 1030 to 3 o'clock. And if you'll notice in the sky, Philadelphians will instantly recognize a Mr. Softy truck. Lots of children were in attendance at this event. This was an event that you could have a ticket. And you see lots of tents around. A lot of massive tents and a lot of small tents. So this took up several streets around the park there across the mosque at 46 and Wyalusi. So my police sources called me at 235 precisely as their calls came in to say to get there's so more than a thousand people there. They have four guns recovered, they have at least four people shot, and one Philadelphia police officer got there and probably was on the scene just for traffic control and just in case. That officer was on the scene. An officer also fired a weapon and shot someone. So they have at least four arrests, maybe more by now, and you can still see in the aftermath of this so many people still there on the scene. A huge police presence, you can probably see in the video, as Skypox zooms around from all those streets, there's probably at least 200 officers there, if not more now. It looks like the whole city police unit is there with so many police cars on so many streets around all these streets. It looks like it's a two-by-two two block area right now, and Philadelphia police is trying to make sure that they got everybody who has been shot to a hospital and also trying to make sure they have everybody who's doing the shooting in custody or if not, not on the scene and danger to anybody else, Sheba. Okay, as we're rounding the bend here with Sky Fox high above 47th and Girard, you can make out um, dozens of people on the ground there. A number of people are dressed in black. Uh, when we first got on this shot here, Steve, I don't, I'm not sure if you can look at the same thing I'm looking at here. Uh, but when our our chopper first got on the scene, you could see what looked like 20 plus Philadelphia police vehicles uh, outside this event. Again, multiple people shot at this event to mark the end of Ramadan right around 2.30 this afternoon. This is West Philadelphia. And Steve, I can see multiple, it looks like multiple uh, areas that police have roped off with their police tape here. Yeah, this is a wide, wide crime scene, and that's what I wanted to emphasize. It's not just on one corner. It looks like it takes up at least two blocks one way, 46th to 48th Street over in West Philly, and then a couple of blocks back, and who knows how they're going to expand that as they learn more. Uh, but you can bet whenever there's a lot of guns fired, there's a whole lot of bullet shell casings all around, and they got to try to figure out who was firing those guns and do they have all the guns that were fired. And that's going to take a forensic test later down the road. But for right now, the immediate concern of Philadelphia police is to see that the danger of the active shooting going on, this mass shooting, is over. And as far as we know, no more shots fired. And we don't know the conditions on the people shot or the ages. But as I said, when you see little kids in line on a nice spring day to get Mr. Softy ice creams, and they were on the planning that they were urging families to come to this family event uh, that was huge in attendance. You can tell just by the area there, you see all those tents. They're not all together. They're going on for a couple of blocks. So this was expected to be a big event, and it certainly was from the Philadelphia police sources saying more than a 1,000 people were there when this happened just before this thing was supposed to end and wrap up at 3 o'clock. 
Steve, from your understanding, when this first um, was alerted to you by your police sources, this event was an outdoor event or most of it was happening indoors? Yeah, you can tell it was an outdoor event just by based on all the tents you see on all the streets. It almost looks like a black party type of event, like a big celebration. And when you have that many people, that's why it's going to be outside as well. You probably couldn't have fit that size of a crowd in the mosque that's there. So a nice day. They got nice weather. And sadly, it's all ruined by more Philadelphia gun violence. And right now, as we're taking a live look at Sky Fox high above the scene at 47th and Gerard, well, we're coming off of that shot. But for a moment there, we can see a number of police officers walking down the sidewalk there. Again, you can see the large police presence. There are so many Philadelphia police vehicles on the ground. It's hard to count how many are there. Uh, but this mass shooting, and we can call it a mass shooting at this point because right now we know at least four people have been shot, probably more, four guns recovered at the scene. Uh, parents are being asked to reunite with their children at 48th and Wild Lucene Avenue to meet with the police officers there. Again, we understand about a thousand people were at this event outdoors, and as the shots were fired, everyone started running in multiple directions, and now there are parents looking to reunite with their children. So uh, if you know a parent who was at this event to end Ramadan and is just worried trying to find their children, please let them know that this is where they can go to 48th and Y Lucene because we assume that any parent that was at this event or perhaps they weren't there with their kids at this event are now looking to uh, find their children, Steve. See, but one of the saddest sights I saw about a dozen police officers around the swings and the playground with that soft ground they have for the safety of kids all looking at bullet shells, it looked like, on another playground, believe it or not, which has just happened. We had a rec center shooting just days ago as well. But you can bet if it's a nice day like this and kids are in an event, there's a playground on the same block. Maybe kids were there at the time. And that is the biggest fear, that kids get hit by any stray gunfire, because you wouldn't think anybody would intend to shoot children, even if they're, you know, a little bit crazy enough to fire a gun and pull a gun at such a large event where there's so many families in attendance. But to see all those police looking like they're examining the ground and looking for any trace of evidence, whether somebody was shooting from there, and that would be what would happen if there's bullet shells there or if somebody was wounded there. So that was just awful to see that. The, all the images that I first saw from our Sky Fox shot was all things that related to kids. And I saw the invitation for this event promoting it, and it mentioned children a couple of times. So. That's my thinking right now. And here's the other thing, Sheba. How often have we talked on breaking news events like this where we have an initial report from Philly police with multiple shots, and we end up learning that people ran for their lives wounded, ended up being driven to the hospital themselves, not in a police car scooped, as we call it here in Philly, or taken in an ambulance. So we may find the numbers of people grazed or shot even higher once the, the people at the hospital work on them and contact the police said, hey, we had another walk-in, we had another drive-in over here. The only positive thing out of this, Sheba, is that close to Penn Presbyterian where we have maybe the best surgeons and nurses and tech staff in the world at handling bullet shell wounds because they've had so much experience at it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the fact that they're so close to a hospital definitely helps things here and the immediate police response as well. See, we're going to let you go for just a few minutes here because we need to bring someone in on the line. Again, if you're just joining us, multiple people shot at an event to mark the end of Ramadan, an Eid celebration happening in West Philly. This is at 47th and Girard happening around 2.30 this afternoon. So we're, we're going on to close to an hour now since this event, since the shooting uh, cut short this Eid celebration in West Philadelphia. From what we understand right now, again, this is preliminary information coming in right now. Four people shot. Uh, there may be more victims. This is preliminary. Four guns recovered right now. Philadelphia police detaining several people. Philadelphia police have multiple officers on the ground. We have counted 20 plus Philadelphia police vehicles. So this is all hands response here. Um, about a thousand people 
at last report seen running from this outdoor event. Police have this park area right in the area 47th and Girard blocked off with police tape. We have seen multiple areas blocked off with police tape. And from what we can understand, there's a, there's an area there at 47th and Girard where there's a number of tents set up, and that is possibly where this Eid celebration was taking place today before gunshots erupted and cut the event drastically short here. Parents seeking to reunite with their children, please head on over to 48th and Wyalusing Avenue to meet with police. That is the staging point uh, right now for all of those parents looking for their kids. And what we do understand that there were a number of kids at this event to end Ramadan, and right now a number of those kids are looking to reunite with, with their parents. Okay. All right, I understand we have someone on the phone right now. Sir, can you um, give us your first and last name, please? Uh, first name is Abdullah. Last name is uh, L-E-G-A Slick. And you were at this event, sir? No, I wasn't here. I was in my office over here on the, in the Girard Meat Market inside, you know, I'm a general manager. Okay. So, um, I heard a lot of people uh, run in uh, right, left, the kids and uh, their family and the boys and the girls. And, um, and they, they, they came in inside and we have to lock the door inside because they are afraid and scared. So um, they told me that been, somebody been shot there like uh, for a couple people there. So this is what happened. How close are you um, to the shooting scene here? We, we are like uh, not even a uh, couple feet. Uh, we're not like between uh, Girard and Lancaster. We are in the intersection, you know, across the street, like, like couple, uh, couple feet. I mean, we're talking about like um, 300 feet, 400 feet could be. Just a scary, scary afternoon. How are those kids doing? Well, the kids, they've been scared. Some of them, they've been crying, and their parents, they can't find their parents and stuff like that. Um, everybody was running. And the thing is, like, uh, um, oh, I mean, I understand that um, it was an event for the Muslim people. It is a shame, and it was very sad to, uh, to see something like this. At least... Um, um, if it was the police over here to protect those those people for the, any event like this, that would be nice. I mean, uh, I mean, all the event like more than we're gonna say 500 people over here, and uh, there is no protection, no uh, security. That's that's not right. Hmm. So you're saying before the event began, you saw, and even during the event, you saw no police presence on the ground. No, I saw one or two, but there's no like you know, for for this event for Muslim Eid, uh, it have to be um, at least like uh, some uh, security for them. You know what I mean? So um, there is good people, there is bad people. You know, and and you know uh, West Philly, Philly, it's always happen. Always there is a lot of shooting in this area. I mean, you know, Philadelphia. I don't have to tell you uh, exactly what's uh, what's going on with these crimes. So around 2.30, um, did you hear, did you distinctly hear the shots ring out? Yeah, we did. We did hear uh, some, you know, shots, but I want to know, it's like a lot of people running and screaming, so, so you can hear a lot of screams too, you know, and people, you know, what I said is like a lot of kids, you know, running on right lips. And how many shots did it sound like to you that were fired? Yeah, it could be three, four, it could be like this, you know. And the kids, they immediately came into your store, the Girard That's Meat correct. Market. Yeah. Um, about how many kids came into the store? Like about like uh, a dozen. I mean, I can't tell. You know, it's like uh, could be 20, 30, like a lot of, you know. Wow, all of those came into the store. Yeah. And uh, around how old? Contact, yeah, they, 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 um, around like between, um, I can see like uh, between five, six years old until like um, they are teenagers like those uh, about like 14 16 17 you know but um, the, the the bad thing is like uh, when you saw like those kids crying they're looking for their their parents they don't have no phones you have to give them the phone they call their mom and dad and you know and they finally they, they came and they um, you know they uh, they took home you know you know with them so 
Well, it's a good thing that you were there to provide refuge for these kids that uh, yeah, sure. were just so shaken up. Are they still in, in the store with you? Well, now everybody left because now it's quiet okay. and uh, and uh, there's uh, there's no um, no uh, I mean uh, no work for uh, uh, what we call we have a lot of work to do actually and we have a lot of business we have a restaurant we have to deliver their their product their meats so we cannot move from here <laughs> I mean we cannot leave the the place you know they they, they block every single corner over here so okay all of the blocks there are, are shut yeah. down and we're taking a live look from high above via our chopper we can see a number of a number of blocks are blocked off around this crime scene here when those kids came into your store what were they saying to you Abdallah they were they were they were scared they will tell me um somebody got shot i saw somebody um like uh, i i think about what the lady she was saying um somebody was shot like close to her i mean uh, she been shot and she was scared and crying you know and i feel like feel very bad for those those kids i mean they can't see this this things like this i mean it is it is uh, it is a shame yeah, it is traumatizing. Yeah, you have yeah. kids as young as five, six years old coming into your store, the Gerard Meat Market there, after seeing uh, some people get shot, shots fired, just a traumatizing event. And, you know, you have an Eid celebration where people come with a sense of safety, uh, a time to celebrate the end of Ramadan, and, and then these shots are fired. And I think people have this sense that they're just not safe anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and with this event, I mean, uh, they're celebrating end of the Ramadan, and everybody's happy, and they are. I mean, uh, what I said one more time, they need, they need like protection like this. I mean, you know, the, this is the, uh, this is every year. I mean, every year there is something like they have an event like this. So, mm -hmm. so uh, in the future, um, I hope if they can do something like more protection, or they cannot you know, get together, so. Abdallah, before we let you go, just one more question for you. Have you been able to step outside your door there and just take a peek outside to see oh, yeah. what everything looks like? It looks like to us that there are multiple crime scenes. Do you know if everything was happening near the park area, near the yeah, tents? Where was everything area. happening? Well, everything is happening, I can see uh, outside right now. It's like... Uh, it's, um, it's a lot of people, a lot of cops over here also uh, still, and I think uh, uh, people, they are like, uh, um, what I said, everything is blocked. I don't know what time they're going to yeah. release this, this area. We're know. trying to get a sense of exactly where the shots were fired, whether it was in that park area or if it in was the area, in the park area. In the park area. Yeah. Okay. All right, Abdallah with the uh, Gerard Meat Market, thank you so much for joining us with this live coverage and giving us just some perspective of everything that was going on there. A scary, scary time for kids and adults at this event to mark the end of Ramadan. We appreciate your time. Uh, we want to steer you over to uh, Fox Local right now, also fox29.com. Continue to stay with both of those before we join you back on the air here at 5 o'clock tonight. I'm Sheba Russell. Check again. And we have continued on with the discussion, the conversation. We are here now on Fox Local. I'm Bill Anderson, and we're continuing to try to get as much information possible as things develop. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take you back out so that you can check the chopper view of everything that was taking place. We do know that there was, as you can see, and you heard Sheba just explaining, uh, there was a shooting at a Ramadan event, an Eid event and celebration in West Philadelphia. We know that so far the information that we have uh, is that it was a very well attended, possibly thousands of people who have been out there throughout the day. It's been going on throughout the day, beginning at about 10.30 this morning, as Steve Keeley reported. Uh, we know that guns have been recovered. We know that people have been taken in to custody. We are hearing more and more reports about things that have taken place there. And as the chopper moves back just a little bit, and you can see kind of starting to establish a perspective of just how big the event was. Um, as Steve Keeley reported, it spanned multiple blocks. Um, there are so all sorts of things that you can see out there 
at this moment um, that kind of give an indication of the fact that it was set up for kids to be out there. You see that there are tents, there are multiple things for children to participate in. So, you know, this was a family event, a family celebration as the chopper moves back a little bit. Uh, we do have people who were out there and we want to spend some time talking to them. Um, obviously, people who were out there and participating uh, and just there for a, a solid discussion and celebration, I should say. Um, I will let them explain the feelings that they're having. I think that anger is a fair thing to uh, say is being felt. We've got one gentleman on with us who many of you are probably familiar with. He is an entrepreneur, uh, well-known individual, goes by Big Duke, um, but was actually out there at the event. And is he, is he ready to talk to us? He him? is there. Yes, sir. How y'all uh, doing, fellas? Good afternoon. Hey, man. We, we appreciate you taking some time out um, to kind of share this situation with us. Before we kind of react to what took place, can you paint the picture for us of what actually was going on out there? The event, the number of people, the, uh, the celebration. Just imagine thousands of people, um, all love, everybody walking around, eating free food, free toys, free horseback rides for the youth. You know, just, just a good day and fill it up. That's what it felt like. Families reuniting, a lot of people coming together. It felt like love. And so you said thousands and horseback riding and what have you. It was a there was a celebration for children. So there were plenty of children out there as well. Yes, plenty of children, plenty of people overall. And this was going on since early this morning. Yes, you know we first we, we you know we do the prayer, which is the E prayer, which um, some matches and some is started at eight eight o'clock some places. Um, some places have 2, 8, and 9.30 or 8, you know, it's different times. But we start off the prayer, and then after the prayer is festivities. This was, you know, it's supposed to be love. It's supposed to be people, you know, walking around, talking, and getting to know each other. And, you know, you sometimes, for me, I was actually, um, you know, born Muslim. And, um, you know, sometimes you might not see people for over years. So this is the time where... You see friends you ain't see in two, three, four years, and it's just it's like a, a um, uh, it's like you know re reuniting with people that you ain't seeing so long, or people that you don't see often. And then this is another time for you know family. Like today, my family had a brunch. We get together, we all exchange gifts with each other. Forty people, we eating brunch food, we having a good time, and then we go to the festivities. And so this is for our area. Is it fair to say that this is kind of the largest event celebrating this in our area, or they're spread out throughout the city? No, it's spread out. It's 2,000 people up Chalmers Park, which is still going on. They got lots of toy rides and things like that up there going on right now. Um, out in southwest Philly, they got one on 70th and Lindbergh right now, and that's still going on. Thousands of people out there. It's thousands of people all over throughout the city. So although that, that, that just occurred, there's still festivities going with thousands of people there. So you were there when this happened. So explain to us what happened the best that you can. It's funny because I walked up and I was telling a brother, I said, you know, we can't control people, you know, um, um, history of the violence or, you know, there's a lot going on in Philadelphia. But if you know that you are into this and into that, just stay home to make the day better. And I literally said that to him and went to shake his hand and walk off, and it went off. And to see, you know, the the, the, the kids running, everybody scrambling. I didn't ran two blocks. Everybody's running. But I am here for call of action. Any young brothers that feel like they got to pick up a gun to resolve a problem, they in some type of trouble, I want y'all to DM me on Instagram. I will give out my email. I'm here for call to action. These brothers need some help. They need some more leadership. I'm here to, 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 to extend my hand. I'm here because I really care. And that really was like really heart touching because when I grew up four or five years, six years old, seven years old, going to these places, 
thousands of people. It's all love. We didn't never have to go go you know go through any of these things. And what I do understand is a lot of people who are maybe new Muslims, they're not that very knowledgeable. So a lot of people is you know um, um, coming to this plan because they think it's a cool thing or because they see how many people is Muslim, but they're not really educating themselves. So now when you look at a thing like today, that could have been a new brother who don't really know no knowledge out here going crazy. And, and now it, it makes it look bad on a Muslim community. Well, but I and think this is not so what let's, we stand for. But let's pause that for a second, because right now we have no idea. I don't think we have any idea who was shooting. We have no idea the reasoning behind it. So right. give us as much information as you can about what what did you experience? that? Because I want to explore the call to action, because I think all of us should be focused on potential solutions. But tell yes. me, tell me what happened. What you experienced? You just heard the shots. People started I running. I heard the shots. I, I heard the shots, and I had to gather myself and say, "Where is this coming from? What's going on?" And I had to look around, and just me seeing my son was literally walking up the block with his mom, uh, my wife. Um, it's just kids running. You got you know the trolley out there. Somebody got hit by a car. It's just so much going on because people don't know where it's coming from, how it's coming. It's just a lot of running. It just it, 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 imagine a thousand people and just a shooting happened and just people just start spreading. And you got kids, like I said, was out there that was having a good time running around. Their mom could have been a little bit over. Now we have kids that we, the brothers, they going back grabbing the kids. Where your mom at? What's your your mom number? Calling them up. You know what I mean? It, 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 it was sad, man. What, what, what was going, taking place out there was very sad and it's very unacceptable. Know where they kids at? Because everybody just start running, trying to see themselves. And then the police, the police is out there. It is a lot of pressure for them. Now anybody running by, grabbing a waist, they grabbing them, locking them. It just, it, just, it put so many people in bad positions because somebody wanted to make a dumb mistake, a dumb decision. So now you got the cops out there. Just if I'm running by and I got my, my I'm grabbing my waist, running, they grabbing me. They grabbing it. So it's people being arrested. It just caused so much trouble off of a dumb decision that was made. So, so far, so we know that there were multiple shots. Um, my understanding, as you just pointed out, is that there are people who have been arrested. Um, right now, it's just a lot of speculation about what is happening. Um, and I, we have to be careful about how we express this and the things that we talk about. But you know, it, it sounds like with you, an event that was so positive, an event that was so helpful to so many people, a day that is supposed to be about that, uh, now you're angry, and now you want to call to action to try to fix this. Yes, I'm very angry. I'm very angry. Like, I'm boiling. I'm very angry because I am one of the leaders. So when I see this thing, and like I said, like you said, we don't know who was shooting. We don't know who let them shots off. But just brothers in, in general, you don't got to be a young guy. You could be an old guy that needs some help, that needs some leadership. It, it, it's, 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 it's sad. It's sad to see. And I feel like a lot of it, people are being failed. So my call to action, it don't matter if you're an older guy, because I'm helping all different kinds of ages. You're an older guy, you're a young guy. Like I said before, I'm here. I'm here. Reach out to me. I'm here. I have an Instagram. I have a, a local line. I have an email. I'm here. And I got a lot of different resources. I'm willing to help you guys. We just took a trip over to Mecca and Medina, literally the first 10 days of Ramadan. And we want to show these young and, and, and older guys a different life, a different view. How when you going over there, you don't have to pray with your gun on you. I'm walking around in slippers, not looking over my back, not thinking about no gun. We want to get you guys to really explore the world and, and, and show you guys different ways to go about different things, even with trouble. It's ways that you could settle some of this trouble without having to pick up a gun. Have you had any chance so far, and we appreciate you taking the time for people who are just tuning in, 
It's Fox 29 Live. It is Fox Local. We're trying to get as much information as possible about shooting multiple shots fired uh, at a Ramadan Eid celebration. Thousands of people there uh, and just trying to get more information. Have you had a chance to talk to, I actually reached out to a couple of, of other leaders uh, across communities and right now it feels like people are kind of huddled up trying to figure out what the next steps are because this is not something that should be attached to a specific community but yet and still you know we know when we start making the different comments there needs to be some sort of discussion about what comes next have you been able to talk to any of your peers uh, any more information that they've gotten or is it all kind of similar surprise and anger? It's all similar um, and anger. Like you said, we don't know what occurred. We don't know what made them things occur. We all are still trying to figure things out. But at the same time, we all are on one accord when it comes to the solution. Okay. We gonna all call each other later on at night and okay, what is the solution here? Was it a young brothers? Was it an old brother? What happened? Was it a female? We don't know what could happen. I can't really blame nobody because we don't know what happened. So our call to action is okay. Let's figure out what happened first, and then we 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 go about how we need to go about it. As a we said, it don't need to be one part of the, uh, 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 a community that, that that just need to be to blame. Because I've seen people that wasn't garbed up or anything that might have been, well, I've seen a couple people being arrested that wasn't even, that didn't look Muslim. So, like you said, we don't know what happened. We don't know who was the shooter. Was it somebody Muslim? Was it somebody non-Muslim? So we can't even, it just happened at a Muslim event. Right. And so you're not, um, hopefully, you're not still in the area now, right? You've gotten a chance to move on and move away from there. Uh, can you explain? No. Are you still there? Me as, me as a community activist, as someone who cared for the people and really stand for the people, I had to make sure some of these women get to their kids. The cops got a lot blocked off, but we're still out here two blocks, three blocks away just, you know, trying to make sure people found their kids. We're still trying to help. I don't run from these type of problems. We are the ones that, me, I am one of the ones that's out here every day with these types of kids. They just need a little help. They need somebody that can relate to them. So I'm not going to run from this. I'm here to still because my heart is, is crying. I need to make sure some of these kids get back to their parents. You get what I'm saying? A lot of moms crying. We need to make sure everything get resolved. So we won't be leaving until things are calmed down and the police, you know, it, it get to that point where a lot, all the kids is back with their parents and they could go on about the day. Wow. So you're still out there taking care of other people, still trying to make sure everyone is OK. So you can then describe to us now in that same basic area, uh, it is calm now. Police presence is, is um, lesser in this moment. Like what is the what's it like out there currently? It, 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 it's a sad day, but like you said, it's calming down. A lot of people are finding their kids because, you know, even the young kids drop their phones. So a lot of people was, you know, returning to their families. And um, we it, it was police from Drexu. You got every type of police officer out here. You know what I mean? So right now, I guess, they, you know, the police are just doing their investigation to see what exactly happened and things like that. So right now, the helicopter is still around. And it's just, you know, it's calmer and, you know, it's calming down. Man, I appreciate you taking some time out uh, to share the situation with us. I appreciate your call to action of trying to make things better for people. And although anger, I think a lot of people are feeling that uh, commitment to trying to make our streets better and safer uh, and taking time out. I appreciate you. Your last word or message to people who are watching about, you know, what comes next? What do we have to do so that we can make sure these types of things don't happen again? We have to step up and be leaders, y'all. We have to step up. We're not just going to blame the parents. It's everybody collectively. We have to step up. We have to step up and continue to try. Don't give up on these people. Continue to help who we can help. And I want to leave my Instagram at CEO Big Duke. If anyone 
feel like they only can go pick up a gun if they feel like they in any type of trouble. It's not just for the, the youth. Anybody, if you feel like you in need that you got to go pick up a gun, before you go do that, please give me a call. We have resources. We we partnered up with po political people. We have resources. If Whether it's a job, whether it's housing, whether if you want to get out of Philadelphia but still be in Pennsylvania, please reach out to me. Before you go pick up a gun and think it's okay to go shoot up anybody or an innocent bystander, you never know what could happen. Please reach out. Reach out. CEO Big Duke. Um, Youngest in Charge is, is my nonprofit organization, and we're going to keep working. We're going to keep working. We're going to keep helping. But please reach out, y'all. Don't do that. Today was a great day. Don't do it, y'all. Don't do it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it because the other side of the story, the other side of the fence, that jail story, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Your life is not worth this. It could be a small miscommunication that could settle things, but people don't even know how to talk things out. So this is why we're here. This is why my organization means a lot here in Southwest Philadelphia and all over the Philadelphia area, because we teach guys, we teach guys these things, how to resolve Man. problems. So Man. I appreciate Bill. I, I appreciate you, Bill, for having me. And, and, and definitely one of the biggest things was a call to action. Okay, that happened. How can we fix things? How can we help things? Next year, do I need to buy some uh, 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 security systems where when people come in a park, there is a scanner going off, so you can't have no weapon in this park. Is that what we got to get through? Treat people like they go into the prison system or go into the hospital? But I think that's what we need. So that's another thing. We just got to come together and say, how are we going to keep every, every event safe? Not just one event. Every event need to be safe. And everybody need to come out feeling like they're going to be safe. And again, we appreciate you taking the time. I'm glad that you're safe and everybody that you have come in contact with is safe. We are, we are hopeful for and praying for everybody else who was out there. And we're with you, you know, in an attempt to try to figure out ways to continue to make things better. Thank you, man. We'll check in with you soon. You stay safe out yes, there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You too, Bill. Have a good one, my brother. All right. You take care. All right, guys, this is Fox 29 Live. This is Fox Local. We're continuing to get you as much information as we possibly can about the situation that took place. West Philadelphia, 47th Gerard, Wyalusing, that area. We know that multiple shots were fired at a Ramadan Eid celebration. We know that the celebration was taking place across multiple blocks throughout the area. Do know that there were thousands, uh, according to people who were out there, according to Big Duke. Uh, according to a couple people I've gotten to on the phone, thousands, large percentage of them were children because there were several events there um, for children to get out there and participate. Um, other than that, we are continuing to accumulate as much information. We've got Fox 29 reporters who are heading out. Uh, Steve Keeley is already there, so we're going to try to check in with him some more and get some additional information. Stay with us. We're going to take just a quick break as we gather up some more information and we'll bring it to you momentarily. I'm Bill Anderson. This is Fox Local, Fox 29 Live. Stay with us. We'll be right back in just a second.
It's Fox 29 Live on Fox Local. I'm Bill Anderson, and we're continuing to get you as much information as we possibly can about the shooting at a Ramadan Eid celebration. There are apparently multiple events going on, thousands of people across the city. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on out there right now. And I just want to give you fair notice. Like you can see out there, our cameras are set up kind of panning the area. You can see that the entire area right now, uh, it was multiple blocks in West Philadelphia. Um, police tape everywhere as they continue the investigation, trying to get as much more information as possible. Uh, you can see the crime scene unit is out there. The investigation has already begun. Multiple police officers uh, and we're kind of seeing this and exploring what we're seeing from our cameras that are on the scene. I also want to give you fair notice, folks, that at any moment there is a press conference that is supposed to be taking place. Uh, there's more information that is supposed to be happening. We will, I'm going to pull back to this shot as they're getting in position, trying to get everything figured out out there. At some point there is a presser. We're being told it's imminent. Um, there are several people who are out there going to explain things, uh, authorities, people who are on the scene. And if and when that happens, and again, we are expecting it soon, not be surprised that this will cut right to it. We want to make sure that we get you all the information that's possible. Uh, so I don't want you to be surprised at all if even mid-sentence we break and go to this presser. So what we are knowing, and, and you're seeing behind us as police officers, and let me pull that back up for you as you can see the additional shots as they're kind of moving around. You can see the police on the scene out there. This is in the 47th Girard, Wyalusing area, West Philadelphia. The event was taking place out there, an Eid celebration, a Ramadan celebration. Uh, thousands of people, we were told by multiple people actually, and you just heard from one who was out at the event. Uh, he heads a nonprofit. He's also an entrepreneur, well known in the community, who was out there when it happened, and said that large percentages of the people who were there were children, and that's one of the things that is uh, perhaps most alarming. I mean, the, the shots fired at what is supposed to be uh, a very positive celebration um, that is alarming, but it happening at an event that is a celebration for children, horseback riding, and those types of things were all set up there. For the children to enjoy themselves, that is that much more alarming. Um, we do know again, thousand plus people in the area at the event. The event has been going on throughout the day. Started at about 10 o'clock. Um, was supposed to start wrapping up uh, right before this took place. This took place around 2:30 ish, leading up to 3, when the event was supposed to conclude. Uh, we have been told by authorities, our Steve Keeley reported already that some guns have been recovered. Um, multiple shots were fired. We do know that much. Uh, this was taking place over several uh, blocks. And so they're still trying to accumulate as much information as possible. And that's why we're waiting for the presser that is going to take place very shortly. And we will get to that. And we're keeping an eye on it just as you are. So you can see behind us um, the sheer number of police officers that are already out there. And this is just one location as they are gathering and getting prepared. So you see investigators, you see officers who are on the scene, but you can also see um, some families that are still trying to kind of piece things together. Uh, you see families that are kind of huddled around, several people in the background on the phones as Big Duke was explaining to us. People are on the phones trying still to track down family members. Uh, when you had that many people out there, uh, he said that he saw cell phones on the ground and people who were just running and scrambling um, immediately because obviously when gunshots ring out, you have no idea where they're coming from. There's that many people there. So people just started scrambling and running. And he is actually still out there on the scene because he said that a lot of the community members are trying to figure out ways um, to make sure all of the people who they were out there with, because this was a family celebration. So all of the people that they were out there uh, with have kind of been put back together. So there are children who just ran and families who ran and people trying to pull that all together. Um, this shot kind of zooms in as we see some more of the investigators coming in, making their way over 
uh, to give us some comments. Um, so bear with us. What we're trying to do is give you as much of a look and as much information in real time as we possibly can. We have been told that the presser is imminent. Uh, it should be happening very shortly. I can see actually off into, uh, off in the distance, a uh, gentleman in a, a orange sweater is actually one of the staffers for one of the local council people out in that area. So I would expect that some of the elected officials will be out there. Um, I believe I see in the background uh, the mayor arriving on the scene. Uh, we can see PHA police. Like it is a show of force and investigators all coming together as much as possible. I'm pretty sure that there in the background right next to the PHA police uh, car is Mayor Sherelle Parker. Um, so it looks like she has arrived on the scene. Um, not unexpected, but we would expect to hear from her very shortly. Um, so they're trying to piece this together. The more information that comes in, we will continue to share it. Uh, but unfortunately, when something like this happens at such a large event with so many people, uh, it's really hard in the immediate aftermath to start trying to piece together any sort of conclusions uh, because there's just so much of an investigation that takes place. So as of this moment, uh, we know multiple shots were fired, but what does multiple mean? Like, I'm sure we will hear uh, more from that or more with that with Mayor Parker uh, very shortly. Uh, I would expect the police commissioner will be there shortly and explaining his perspective on this as well. You can see walking across the back, again, representatives from all sorts of, uh, of different uh, authorities. So the investigation continues. We're going to take another quick break. Again, stay with us because as soon as the press conference starts, we will break in and get right to it. This is Fox 29 Live on Fox Local. Stay with us. Fox 29 Live on Fox Local. We're continuing to try to keep you as updated as absolutely possible over what we now know about a shooting that took place at a Ramadan celebration and Eid event that was going on. We know that a thousand plus people were out there. We know that um, there's an investigation that is continuing. We are aware of the fact that there is a press conference that is expected to happen relatively soon and you're taking a look again at the behind the scenes as everything is trying to get set up. We appreciate our team, uh, our Fox 29 photogs and Fox local photogs who are out there kind of keeping an eye on all of this as it comes together. And this is just giving you an idea 
of the location, 47th around Girard, Wyalusing. But the event was taking place, uh, the Ramadan celebration, the Eid celebration, was taking place on multiple blocks. There were multiple blocks that were shut down. There was a situation with you know, children who were out there, events set up for the children. And I think that that's part of the reason. I mean, anytime shots are fired, there is a concern. When shots are fired, as we pan in, and that uh, is Police Commissioner Bethel, anytime we pan in or we uh, kind of take a look at this and there are multiple children involved or potentially children involved or children out there, it kind of takes things up a step. Um, and that's why people are out there. I mean, people are already going to be concerned when shots are fired. Um, it's such a crowded location with the public there, with families there. Uh, but when it's that type of event, um, it becomes that much more of a concern. You can see multiple elected officials, Representative Amon Brown uh, is out there. We just saw the police commissioner. I believe that we saw the mayor out there um, just a little while ago. So she is on the scene. And what generally happens in these types of situations is they pull together as many people as possible. They are trying to get people there as soon as they, uh, as they can. And they're also just trying to accumulate as much information as possible. And because of such a wide area, um, because of so many people scrambling, uh, Big Duke community activist, entrepreneur who was on with us earlier, uh, was describing the fact that police officers on the scene trying to figure out exactly what's going on and they're just kind of grabbing people as they're running by because when shots are fired and they're not exactly sure where they're coming from, they're grabbing individuals, trying to get answers, trying to figure out who's running because they're concerned, uh, who's running because they may be involved, that area. And now as we have pulled out a little bit, you can see 48th Street, you can see uh, Lancaster, you can see Girard. So for context, that kind of gives you the area that we're looking at. Um, but anybody who's familiar with Philadelphia, with West Philadelphia, uh, it also kind of gives you an idea of just how large and populated an area we're talking about um, and kind of adds to the additional concerns that we have. You see police cars all over the place. This is a, a highly populated area. And as they are getting the cameras set up and ready to continue on with the press conference that we are being told uh, could happen momentarily. They're trying to get all of those shots set and ready to go. So I do want to give you fair warning that when the press conference happens, we will go directly to Sheba Russell, who is in our broadcast studio, Jason Martinez. I'm just looking over because they're, they're right to my right. So they're getting set up and ready to go ahead and get you all the information as possible. We're not sure exactly uh, when this press conference is going to take place. Um, you're seeing behind me, and when we pull up the cameras, you're seeing as much of the, the setup as possible. Um, but when something like this happens, there's so many different people that you have to get there onto the scene. You're gonna want the mayor, who we believe has arrived. You're gonna want the police commissioner, uh, who we saw believe has arrived. Uh, the local officials, we saw a couple of them uh, as well as we were checking out the shot. So they're trying to get this coordinated so that we can get right to it. And at the same time, and again, as we take a look at the shot from one of our photographers on the scene, at the same time, you know, you're trying to accumulate as much information as possible because when you go live with this press conference, there is a very clear understanding that people are going to have questions, that people are going to want answers to their concerns. Um, and so I'd imagine that's part of what's taking place now, or it would be standard practice that right now those folks are talking to each other as much as possible. Uh, there are calls being made to try to make sure, <coughs> excuse me, families um, that perhaps were separated are finding their way back together. Um, again, we talked about the fact that some of the people on the scene told us that it all happened so fast and people started uh, scattering and running. Uh, and so there were plenty of people. Uh, and again, let me pull this back up. Uh, there were plenty of people who just, in the midst of everything that was taking place, panicked. 
through cell phones or scattered one way when people they were with potentially scattered the other way. Uh, the shots went up, but as was described to us from people who were on the scene, nobody knew specifically um, where it was all coming from. So that's what they're kind of trying to pull together right now, um, cutting Hi. away. Hi. Okay. All right, so our managing editor, Megan Duncan, is here with some additional information. And we have a Zoom coming up just from our imam. Are we sharing mics or they're getting you a microphone? Well, I don't know the answer. <laughs> so tell we'll us let him do the Zoom. and we have to been completely switch mics. That's where I'll do it that way. No, okay. We can do it this yeah, way. we can do it this way. Hi, yeah. how are you? I'm doing well. I mean, we've, I know we've all been better. I know we have. Um, so we are, it's a very busy newsroom out there, as you can probably saw earlier. Yes. Or you, can, you will see if we have a newsroom shot again. Um, we are just waiting right now for Philadelphia police to talk. Okay. Uh, we know that Sherelle Parker and Commissioner Bethel are there on the scene. Um, we are at um, the hospital in University City. Okay. We, uh, Chris O'Connell did speak to the uh, woman whose husband was shot. Okay. Um, so we will hear from her at five. Um, behind the scenes, when we have a breaking news story like this, um, we just work every angle we can. Of course, we send our crews in the field, but we, of course, set work every angle that we can. And so our, um, you know, our, our planning manager, who knows basically everybody in the city of Philadelphia and yeah. surrounding counties, it has been working the phones. And she has an imam mm -hmm. who um, I believe was part of today's event for families that is what um getting set up that is what mike event. is mike g's getting you set mentioned up mentioned something because we've been in here since mm -hmm. pretty much when it when it initially happened mm -hmm. you mentioned that we are aware and at the hospital for one of the people who was shot correct update us on what we know about numbers in terms of the latest i saw was two um that's the latest that i saw i i will tell you i do not have the latest information yeah. if i were uh, I came up as a producer on the other side of the camera than Bill. Right. So if I were producing this newscast right now, before I told the anchor in his ear, two people shot, I would confirm, confirm that. Okay. Um, that was the latest thing that I saw. So We do know people were shot, and we know that correct. we're at the hospital. Correct. And we, we did speak with the wife of a man who was shot at the event. Okay. Um, wow. We know that there's a, a gathering area for families. I don't know if you've talked about that at we uh, have not, but let's talk about because we're showing the scene, so we're cutting to showing the scene while we talk over it, um, and it's kind of this is the forty-eight got it. Um, shot. So there's an area away from there where they're asking families who, because the gentleman we had on earlier, community activist, was saying that in the midst of all the craziness, people just kind of scattered, correct, uh, and went separate ways. So there's yes. a way to pull them together. So Kelly Rule, our reporter, our fantastic reporter that you know. Um, and uh, had got from Philadelphia Police, uh, and Tanya Little from Philadelphia Police confirms uh, 47th and Wyalusing Avenue at Sister Clara Muhammad School. Mm -hmm. That's where families can reunite. So, yes, as you said, Steve Keeley was saying earlier, you could see the Mr. Softy truck there. It was a, it was like a, a meal event. Um, yeah, they had horseback rides. They had like, it was yeah, set all up kinds of stuff. Because school is off today. I'm sure you've mentioned that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, parents. Yeah, parents seeking to reunite with their kids head to 47th and Wyalusing at Sister Clara Muhammad School. Um, another thing we just are getting in, the ATF is helping uh, with this investigation. You know, the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, obviously they go in, they can help with um, ballistics. Sometimes the ATF has access to technology mm -hmm. that our Philadelphia police you know, they can be like very, um, they have a lot of shooting cases yeah. and the ATF can help accelerate things and do use some of their technology to help connect some dots or to help um, well, we, in the investigation. Right. They can add additional resources that people on the scene may not. And you can see from this shot that we're showing and we've been following this throughout and bear with us folks. So you're seeing people arrive. Oh, that's Thank you. We're sharing. sharing. <laughs> You're seeing people <laughs> <laughs> arrive uh, on the scene, and we're trying to get up. Uh, and Megan was talking about, I'm going to try to pull this one back because it looks like our shot right now um, is getting ready to go to the press. So oh, let's, get, let's get to the press conference. Who continue to serve in this department and the actions they took today. 
Um, I, I just continue to be so, so proud of them, as well as those individuals who were in, in the park who were grabbed kids and got them out of harm's way. It was a collective effort today for those who were attending the event, as well as our police officers to, to be able to minimize the number of incidents that we had. What we do know, and it will change, and it may change significantly, and so we're going to be very broad in our conversation today. But at 2.30 today, uh, there was an uh, after Ramadan celebration here at, at the park. We had about a thousand uh, individuals out there and things were going well. We had a detail uh, assigned to this uh, event and they were working the outsides. During that time period, they were writing tickets. There was tickets, uh, cars were parking on the, on the gas station behind us and they were writing tickets. At some point, they hear a large volley of, of gunfire. They say approximately 30 gunshots. What we do know is there appear to be two factions within the park who are now exchanging gunfire. As the officers start to deploy into the park, they observe three males and a female uh, running and they stop those individuals and we recover four weapons. At that same time, we have one of our officers who was assigned to the area engage a 15-year-old male who has a weapon. She fires and that male is, receives a gunshot to his shoulder and his leg. The officer secures that weapon and then transfers that child to the hospital. We have another individual who showed up who's 22 years old. He has a, shot, a gunshot to his stomach, and we believe that may have happened during the gunfire. We also have another juvenile who showed up shortly after within the last half an hour at the hospital who has a gunshot wound to his hands. And so, so in, in total, we have five individuals under arrest four who were carrying weapons, as well as the individual that a police officer uh, fired and, and struck, as well as an uh, individual um, adult. It was a, that's, a, that's the numbers, right? So that's the that's numbers in total. Uh, so Did that's what we're- again, five arrested? So we have a total of five, uh, four, three uh, males and a female who were arrested carrying a weapon. And then we have another individual, the 15 year old, who was uh, shot by our officer. We covered a weapon in that scenario as well for a total of five. Three now. We now have three individuals shot, one by the police officer, one we believe in the exchange of gunfire, where it's unknown and not determined now the child, the juvenile who was shot in the hand, how they, but we do know that they were here at this event. What do you want to say to the folks out here, obviously, who are, as you know, concerned and can't believe this happened at such a spot well, spot? And place. Well, listen, I, I walked through uh, this event and, and, and we know that, that the majority, 99% of the individuals at this event are good people who wanted to have a good time. And once again, we have young people engaging in gunfire who, who just really destroyed the sanctity of what happened. There was a, man, a gentleman who I was walking by who said, you know, we have to learn how to love each other. And he was really frustrated. One thing I do know, uh, the mayor was on location, as many of you saw, to come down here, not just to support us, but to also support the community. She is actively engaged now in reaching out to our Islamic community to make sure that they have all the support they have. Immediately after this incident, I contacted her as well, and we were able to bring support services. So we do have support services at, at, at our recovery center over here at the, at the Claire Muhammad uh, uh, you know, School to be able to have uh, trauma services uh, there. Uh, but the mayor you know, clearly has sent her message to the community, how important it for her to be on location, and she knows that we're here to support them. We would ask, though, at this time, uh, that anyone has any uh, information that they would call 215-686-TIPS or call our homicide division. We did not have a homicide in this situation, but considering the magnitude of the situation and their capacity to deal with, we would, we have our homicide and our shooting investigation team working collectively on this. We asked them to call 215-686-3334. Two weeks ago, you had a panel and you were talking about the study you were finding that young people were often shooting around the time that this happened. And you were really trying to dive into the context that can prevent more things like this happening. Judging from what you've learned from that study now, what would you apply to a situation like I, I don't know in this case we would apply it to, to this scenario only because school's closed today. Right. And so because of the holiday, uh, and in this situation, until we get the true understanding of what the context over here, we won't know be able to answer that. Clearly the data shows us the types of incidents that I shared previously was happening after school time. I don't know if this translates into this scenario here, but just because of the dynamics and the way it played out today. And Commissioner, as far as injuries, was there also um, a child that was Oh yeah, I, I do apologize. So, yeah, so unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, during our, our, our large response, 
at the time when we were responding, there were multiple calls coming over the air. Uh, for those of you know, we have our assist officer. I think we went to three or four assists in this, two, and we had large portions of the city deployed. Unfortunately, during this incident, one of our patrol wagons struck a young child, and she re recovered a fractured leg uh, in that scenario. And clearly, we send our prayers out to her and her family. That is not our intended purpose, and we will make sure we'll be following up with her and her family to let them know that. And we also heard reports that somebody had a heart attack that maybe they were that was running like during the call. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it okay. is one of the most traumatic situations. I was able to take a quick glimpse of the film uh, and just to see the mass of people running away from the park. Clearly, I'm sure there may have been some kind of underlying medical I issues that may have resulted from that, but we have no information at this point that anyone suffered a, a heart attack. Uh, that was transported from here by us for rescue uh, to the hospital. Are you Commissioner, for a do you car have or anything like that? Uh, we have no information on a car involved at this point. Commissioner, do you have any message for parents if these young people it, it, were involved in the shooting, minors? Is there any message to parents looking after kids who are wrapped up in things like that? Well, listen, I, I've made this message multiple times about parent engagement and their responsibility in, in all of this. If you're not engaged with your child and trying to figure out what they're doing, where they're hiding the guns in your house and the activity involved, then you're not doing your duty, right? And so that it may not even a parent. We have to understand that many of our kids are being raised by second generation and grandparents who don't have the capacity oftentimes to do the things that we ask them to do. But we always are gonna lean on a true adult to be able to engage these young people. But the stuff we see out here, I mean, the guns that we're recovering, I think we're in a totally different process now. Can't make excuses for all these kids. Some of them are out here actively engaging in gunfire actively wanting to be involved in shootings and want to and as you see today uh, do that and there is no zero tolerance for that right and we're not going to make any excuses for that and we're going to do everything we now have four in custody and we'll be looking for those others that were involved commissioner hard to hear back here but can you just for, for clarity's sake the event prayer in the park that was going on it's been described to us separate from the incidents that happened on the street with the shootings or well, I, it's all i mean we don't have any disconnection of the two we have the incident our showcases are in the park, so it is not a, you know, the incident was happening as a result of the celebration that was going on. Not that the celebration caused it, individuals coming, it was a public event. Anyone can have access to come into this event, so it was not a ticketed event. And so clearly we had some individual who decided to use this as a way, to, I mean, just like anything else we see. When we see individuals who are beefing and going at each other, oftentimes they don't care where they see, them at, see each other at. And so in this case, clearly they saw something going on in the park. What that was, it caused two factions to start to pull out guns and shoot at each other. The investigation, we'll, we'll be looking into that. Commissioner, what thoughts on this 15-year-old coming into eye contact with the Philadelphia police officer, still having the officer have to shoot? Well, listen, I mean, you know, I, I met with the officer. Uh, I commended for her actions. Uh, we're fortunate today that she was not uh, fired upon, and at the same time, fortunate that she did not have to take a juvenile's life. But the bravery that she displayed and the valor that she's displayed by taking not only engaging the individual but also recognizing that she had a child in front of her and did her due diligence to put her him in their car and transport to the hospital is a testament to the men and women who work for me and i applaud her efforts and the work that she did and to be clear so the 15 year old was shot after the officer no, we, no, no, no. we don't we, we were still investigating all of that we that this charge at this point into the police shooting part what i can tell you that my officer did shoot that shoulder and one leg for information related that we will not be providing that at this time. Is he in stable sure. condition? Yes, of all the people who were shot, 22 year olds in condition, the 15 year olds in stable condition. Commissioner, Commissioner are other partners PIs working now? with yours? Other partners uh, working with yours right now in, under the investigation? Uh, we always engage our partners. Uh, we will always engage our federal partners. ATF was already on the ground with us. FBI, you know, the attorney's office as well. All the partners customarily have seen us engaged with our own station here to support us in every effort we need. What about the safety plan? We have a total of five uh, five in custody. Five. Yes. 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 Before you walk away, can you break that down one more time? We have three, five arrested. We have three, uh, three males and one female who we arrested as they exited the park, pursued them, and recovered a total of four weapons from them. We have a fifth, uh, web, uh, fifth individual arrested. That is the 15-year-old juvenile who was shot by police, and we recovered a gun in that scenario. So we have a total of five individuals in custody, and we have a total of five guns. 15-year-old who was shot by the officer. That's correct. He's in stable condition. That is correct. Shot in the shoulder. And the leg. And the leg. That is and, correct. And there was a gun found on that team. No, the gun, yeah, he had the gun. She saw the gun. She saw the gun. Any words about the safety plan? 
I, I think we will, we will move on from that. I mean, at this point, we're going to deal with the situation here, um, and we'll discuss that at, at another time. But I think we had three juveniles and maybe one adult out of that four grouping yes. of four. Three juveniles and one adult out of the group of four that we recovered four guns. All right, we're going to end it there. I listen. I appreciate you guys, and uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to move out. Just give us sort of a thumbnail. <laughs> no, man. A thumbnail. I, I, I can't do it, baby. I appreciate you. <laughs>
moving closer and enter the violence in some of these places in our community. So that really is what we are hoping to move forward with doing, especially from my office. All the shot, 48th, 47th, Gerard, Wyalusing, in that area, and all throughout that area, uh, blocks were closed. It was a, a thousand plus person event with multiple blocks that were shut down. We just heard during the presser. So here's some of the information we have, and we're going to get one of our senior executive producers to come in, Abby Miller. And we also have uh, a gentleman who was there right across the street from everything that was happening, a store owner who's going to share with us his experiences of what was taking place. Um, as you can see, and we can't hear it right now, but the scene is still active. Community leaders are still out there continuing to talk. They're continuing to share their situation, share their experiences, and we will get you all of that information, the sound, the updates, the things that they are saying in our five o'clock news. Up until that point, we're gonna to continue to try and get as many answers as possible. So one of the things that we heard earlier from community leaders, nonprofit organizers, gentleman who goes by Big Duke who came on with us earlier, said that there were a lot of parents and relatives and people who scattered and went separate directions when the shooting started. It makes sense, it was a large event, there were a lot of people. There is now an area set up at Sister Clara Muhammad School that is just a couple blocks from that area yes. where families can all come together um, if they are looking to, uh, to get information. We are moving quickly, folks, so we're gonna, Abby and I are going to share a microphone oh, my. as we figure this out. Yeah, listen, we, we came running in when this happened to try oh, to get as much yeah, information I, as possible. Uh, it is an active, uh, situation so they're gonna Sticking figure that out yeah. I think so I think yeah. I think we're we're fine yeah, we're, good. Like, we're, we're sharing the information it's breaking all news, good folks, right situations. that's the nature <laughs> of what happens so tell us we were both watching mm -hmm. um, reporters are moving around to yes. different areas uh, but tell us what did what did you get from it and what do we see in the press um, so Bethel spoke Commissioner Bethel spoke at the scene um, there were hundreds if not over a thousand people at this event uh, that was to celebrate the end of Ramadan when the gunshots uh, went off we know that five people are in custody one of those five people who are in custody is a 15 year old that was shot by an officer shot twice once in the thigh um, and uh, is in stable condition and they recovered five weapons so um, we don't necessarily know kind of what sparked everything. Um, we do know that uh, three people were injured, and I believe that includes the 15-year-old who was shot by an officer. Um, one thing that Bethel was very clear about was that there are no fatalities um, within the shooting, so that that is good news, um, but that both the shooting investigation unit and the homicide unit are both investigating, and they're looking through video. He did mention that an officer racing to the scene uh, may have uh, come in contact with a young girl, so that they've talked to that um, uh, that family. Um, we have our Chris O'Connell is at the hospital uh, and just spoke to a woman who is a relative of someone who was hit and just described the utter chaos of you know, all these people, and that's when you talk about the reunification center for these families, all of these people were there at this event and everything just scattered. And so if your kids were playing here or you were standing here, and so our Don Timoney is working to talk to people who are reuniting together right now, but that is what we saw. Um, uh, Bethel talked about we saw Mayor Parker at the scene. Uh, so she's there getting updated on everything um, and just really a chaotic event. And uh, the officers, I've, I, it's been a long time, if ever, that I've seen that number of officers on scene and such just a wide swath of a scene that we've been looking at on Chopper. Um, so that's what we, five in custody, including a 15 year old who exchanged gunfire with an officer, five weapons in custody, five weapons recovered, um, and three people injured. And I believe that three includes the 15 year old who was shot by the female officer. So major takeaways is, is everyone who has, who's been shot and there are injuries, but everybody is relatively stable. Yes. Well, he said, he made a point to say that all three are, are stable. Yes. Okay. The, we actually had a gentleman on earlier, a community activist, who talked about that somebody got, they saw somebody get hit by a car. Um, so there's an indication that that may have been police officer trying to get to the scene yeah. in that case. Or potential, I mean, I, who knows if more well, than one, more, in general, yeah. whether that was the officer or not, it seems like it was just chaos in that moment. And as you've mentioned before, you know, Philly School District is off today uh, for the end of Ramadan. So there were a lot of people out there, a lot of kids out there, um, and they still don't know necessarily what sparked everything. They're trying to look into that right now. 
Um, and Bethel, you know, you remember before he was police commissioner, he led the school district police. Yeah. So this has been his mission to like protect these kids for years now. And you can see like the anger and the frustration he's feeling when he goes to these events and and these horrific situations that, you know, they're working tirelessly to, you know, protect kids from getting involved in this. And then seeing this happen, you know, you just his message to parents and he, someone asked him, what is your message to, you know, parents of kids? And and he's you could see the frustration is, you know, parents need to get involved. They need to. He's like, check your check your kids on your pillows, check everywhere, because right. he's sick of having to come to us and tell us these about the details of these horrific situations just like we are sick of it as a city that these things keep happening and so well, and the, the frustration that you hear i mean it's obviously frustration for a lot of reasons yes. but when you start talking about police officers potentially engage um shooting or a, a conflict mm -hmm. with somebody who's 15 years old 15. you know and so you're talking about in these types of situations we were all sitting here going well, wow this was an event where there were so many children in attendance mm -hmm. you know there were all sorts of things set up for the kids to enjoy themselves mm -hmm. during the event now the conversation kind of turns to it was a in quotes child you know at yeah. least one of the people who was arrested with a gun uh, may have engaged police officers you know so now it's children and you know mm -hmm. children's safety and children potentially with the gun so you understand his frustration absolutely and commissioner bethel said that you know thankfully no one was killed here there were no homicides here and thankfully that that officer didn't you know did fire at the teenager but did not kill a child right. you know that this is kind of where we're at right now and i remember you know uh we've heard other city leaders talk about when you know children are victims of this gun violence and that they're the victims who are actually hit by the bullets and the victims you know these children who are getting pulled into it and are the shooters too and so just this this cycle that we're going through um so yeah it's 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 fortunate that no one was killed in this situation and you want to say almost lucky because there were so many people there that um it i hate to say it this way but how much worse it could have been it's, it's tragic that we think in those terms yes. these days but i was thinking the same thing with thousand plus people there with children there like we're hearing about four or five people shot, five in custody, you almost are left with, wow, it's, we're lucky that it wasn't worse than that. And that's a, a an unbelievably <laughs> horrifying comment to make, but it's real. It's real. And, you know, we've just come off of, what was it, a month ago where we had multiple shootings targeting teenagers at SEPTA stops, and that was, you know, the, the same thing then. Seven kids hit, but at least in one of them, no one died, and the other one, someone did. And it's just, it is, it's where we're at right now to have to think that at least everyone survived doesn't yeah. mean there there's not the trauma of what just happened because we've talked to these gunshot victims who the months and the years it takes to recover from this um but that no one was killed in this situation abby i appreciate you thank you <laughs> there's a lot going on folks so we're gonna let abby get back to reporters who are at every location All they're at the, the hospital <laughs> they're on the scene they're yes. talking to different folks and thank you for getting us caught up Absolutely. I uh, appreciate it. Guys, and, and honestly, as, as much as you talk about something like that, it's crazy to think that you're almost kind of a, a sigh of relief that it wasn't worse. You know, people are stable, uh, thousands out there. Uh, but it was a very scary situation. And I believe we have, Ab we have Abdullah. Zoom ready. Abdullah, Abdullah uh, is a store owner who was there on the scene right across the street, my understanding is, uh, and thank you, sir, for taking a couple minutes to talk to us. Hi, thank you. So tell us, so your location was what? Directly across the street from like from the event? Um, okay, uh, yes, at 47 and Girard Avenue. Um, we're talking about uh, um, between Lancaster and Girard Avenue, 47 and Girard. I'm the store manager. I'm not the owner. So. Okay, so I appreciate that. So well, tell me what happened. You just, you heard shots. Kids came running in. Like, describe the scene to us. Yeah, I mean, I heard the shots, and um, the kids, uh, the kids who was running uh, through our store, and um, they've been crying and screaming. So, and, and we have to let them in. And we're talking about like, uh, uh, we're talking about uh, more than 20, 30 kids um, between age of five to uh, 20, something like this. Um, and uh, they been crying and they're looking for their parents also um and uh, we have to some kids they have the you know the cell phones um you know uh, 
some kids they don't and we have to provide them the phone they call their parents so they were just this was children who were scattering teens who were scattering came to your store uh, you let them in thankfully and help them try to reconnect with their parents but what are you thinking when you're there you hear gunshots and then suddenly there's just this rush of individuals who are trying to come in the store that's got to be you know, a situation of wanting to be helpful but also concerned yourself well yeah um be honest with you it's um, you know west philadelphia it's, uh, it's more scary in this area but it's it is uh it is uh we have to help those kids uh, no matter what and uh we have to um provide um you know their security but uh, also um we have to protect ourselves i mean we have to make sure uh nobody outside you know um running after them or stuff like that so what were the the children saying to you when they came in just there are gunshots please let us in help they, us they're describing the scene like you were kind of figuring it out as they came to you well they start like somebody uh got shot um, um some people they, they start to um to say that um i heard um uh you know um gunshots and i said yeah i did but uh, um, she told me that somebody had been shot close to uh, her the lady and she was crying crying the poor girl and uh we tried to calm her down and give her some water and stuff like that you know um that's uh, i mean everybody would be scared so well and i think it's important for people to understand that that's not what this neighborhood is that's certainly not what this event typically is you know so this these are thousands of people who are out there having a celebration. This was going on since about 10.30 this morning. And generally speaking, like describe that to me. It was a, a celebration, a positive event until it wasn't. I mean, this, this celebration had been like uh, every year. Um, I can remember last year it was the same thing. And uh, after Ramadan, when they finished, you know, um, the holly of uh, Ramadan. And uh, today is the iftar, Eid. And everybody got together over here. The thousands of people we're talking about. A lot of people over here. And uh, uh, what I'm saying is, um, at least if they provide them some uh, more uh, security and more, you know, police, uh, some event like this, they have to be protected. Can you help us understand for context? We just got finished carrying a press conference. The police commissioner and others were explaining that all of the shell casings. So. To the best of their knowledge, all the shots fired were in a, a nearby park. Um, no indication that and it really even had anything at all to do with the celebration. It's a public event. There were a lot of people there. Uh, but where, where is that park that he's talking about in location to, in relation to 47th, 48th, Wailusing, Gerard, where you are? Yeah, um, yeah normally it's uh, like we're talking about like it's in Lancaster. I can see it from my window over here. It's not that far from us, and uh, oh, I know uh, as soon as uh, they got the gun shot, a lot of police they came in. They did good job. They look in the right left. They closed all this area. But uh, what I'm saying is, I wasn't there. Just I heard, you know, the gun shot. I heard, the, you know, and I saw those kids coming into uh, our store. So, wow. All right. I mean, I appreciate you sharing the information. Is there anything else to add for us? Is What's your thoughts going forward? We've talked to a couple community activists that said that they didn't want this to kind of paint the community or even the event yeah. in a negative way. I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm Muslim too. I'm celebrating the Eid today, and uh, I, I feel very upset about this happened, this event. So uh, um, if in the future, if they can provide more, more, you know, security and more, you know, something like they can be uh, like more, uh, what I'm saying is uh, safe. That's very important. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you're safe. We appreciate the fact that you were willing to help out the young people who were in a very scary situation, help them reunite with their families. Uh, but thank you very much, and you stay safe. Sure. sure. Thank you for having me, and uh, God bless you. Thank, thank you. you. And you. We appreciate you. Appreciate you spending some time with us. So we're continuing to accumulate information. I believe we can take one more quick break and then we will come back, getting you all caught up. Uh, more details, as Abby just pointed out. Yes, uh, our reporters are in 
multiple locations. They are at the hospital uh, where one of the individuals who was shot and is in stable condition, they spoke with some of the families there. They've had further discussions with several different people. Uh, so we will have all of that for you coming up in just about 10 minutes on the Fox 29 News. But we're doing our best to keep you informed here on Fox Local, Fox 29 Live. Uh, a scary event, but as we continue to get more and more information, it, it is, as Abby and I pointed out, it's horrific to say but you're almost thankful that it wasn't worse. With thousands of people, multiple shots fired, guns in the hands of teens, uh, and so far all indications are that everyone involved was stable, physically, uh, emotionally shaken, physically stable. Uh, let's take a break and we will come back in just a minute. Fox 29 Live on Fox Local. event Fox in West Live Philadelphia, multiple Local, people shot from what we can understand here. This is at uh, the corner of 47th and Gerard Avenue. You can see now a lot of activity there on the ground, multiple people uh, just multiple standing around, police activity as well. We understand this happened right around 2.30 this afternoon. Yeah, Again, multiple people shot. Scene, at this um, point, it is not clear ago. how many people were shot. The number of victims have ranged from two to we're still trying to get those numbers here. Multiple people detained Shortly several firearms uh, uh, went place. off we during this exchange at the end of the were fired at a Ramadan a Eid event celebrating the end of Ramadan in West Philadelphia and this shot from a little bit earlier from the chopper is helping give kind of context to what was taking place there so you can see um, that this was an event that took place it was a couple of blocks all coming together um, it's, you can see it's a residential area, but also several businesses. It was all set up um, for all sorts of events, the celebration, young people. But you can see just by the sheer number of police officers and the, the streets that were closed, how extensive a celebration it was. And we're told that with thousand plus people, like they were throughout this area with children out there, with families out there when shots fired. And now, as you can see, this shot was from a little bit earlier. As you can see it pulling out and just the police officers, the cars everywhere, giving you an idea of how it kind of branched out. You also can see in this shot the yellow police tape that is giving some sort of indication as Commissioner Bethel and others were describing the scene. They say that all of the shell casings were found in this area that you're seeing from the chopper with the police tape right there in the park. So although it is kind of 
adjacent, like right off to the side of where we know the celebration was taking place. There's no indication, and it's important to point this out, there's no indication as much as unfortunately people that we've spoken to, representatives of Muslim communities and what have you, feel the need to defend their event and their celebration. Um, there's no indication that this had anything at all to do with anybody at all who was there for any legitimate reason associated with what is an event that happens not only every year there, but multiple places across the city. Like there are thousands, as we spoke to uh, community activists, entrepreneur, uh, goes by Big Duke in an emotional discussion earlier, um, he was pointing out to us that there were literally thousands of other people continuing their celebration at other events across the city at the same time that there was kind of a call to action to save this section of the city and these young people and press conferences and what have you were going on. And I, I do think, although it is still early uh, in terms of accumulating details and you're seeing again, this kind of police tape from Sky Fox video earlier, you're seeing the park that they were describing uh, as the location where the shell casings were found. Um, again, so that, that could honestly, folks, be anything. I think the scary part, and there's a lot of scary parts about shots being fired, <coughs> excuse me, with thousands of people around, uh, but, but I think the perhaps the scariest part of it was not only how many children were in the event. And again, this shot shows you context. All of these white SUVs that you see spread out all throughout the area are police officers who came in to kind of shut down the area where this was taking place. And it shows you just how extensive an area it was that this celebration was, uh, was taking place. But not only were there young people there when shots were fired, but it is our understanding from Commissioner Bethel, as he went out and explained all of this, that it is suspected as of this moment. It is known that police engaged uh, a young person, shots were exchanged, that young person was shot twice, uh, currently in the hospital receiving treatment. But it is, and it's, I, I guess it's not too far of a leap, and we will hear more of this as our reporters kind of get on the scene, um, it's not too far of a leap to say, based on the commissioner's explanation, that police officers engaged that individual. They were shot and arrested with a gun. And so to, to draw the conclusion that a 15-year-old was one of the people um, who was out there shooting and then engaging with police, uh, that's scary. Uh, and that kind of speaks to the situation that we are dealing with here in the city of Philadelphia and you know Philadelphia in general specifically at this event. Again, this is video from a little bit earlier, but you see when police officers kind of came in, um, started searching through that park where shell casings were found. Uh, but this also gives you kind of an idea and a look at just how significant an investigation this is going to be for you know, some time as they try to figure out everything that is going on in this, uh, in this situation. So news is coming up shortly. I'm going to kind of recap for you what we know again, and I appreciate you staying with us. We are here to try to provide as much information as we possibly can. We will expand on that information with Jason Martinez, Sheba Russell, the five o'clock news coming up shortly. But from roughly 2.30, uh, what we know so far is that at about that time, an event that was taking place, a celebration of the end of Ramadan, Eid celebration, it is an annual event, uh, it takes place all throughout, not just Philadelphia, but really the country as a celebration of the world, the celebration of the end of, uh, of Ramadan. Thousand plus people, West Philadelphia, started at about 1030, and it was getting pretty close to its conclusion at three o'clock is when it was scheduled to end at about 230 when shots rang out. I'm not sure just how many shots, but we know that multiple guns were recovered. I'm sorry, I was just making sure we're kind of getting indication that they are ready for the news.
Uh, we saw, my apologies, folks. We were trying to see as we're looking at this video. I paused for a minute because I know that they are getting ready for the news in just a couple of minutes. Uh, and I wanted to make sure as they were talking and getting their video ready that we were not talking over something that was significant that you needed to hear. So my apologies for that pause. We know that um, several have now been recovered due to that information. Uh, we know that multiple people have been shot and are currently in the hospital. According to Commissioner Bethel, all of the people who were shot um, either by people on the scene who are accused of or arrested for shooting at the event or by uh, police officers um, at least one of uh, the people 15 year old um, we know that they are all according to commissioner bethel in stable condition as of this moment so thankfully even with all of um, the fear the gunshots the amount of people there so far, all reports indicate that this was not a fatal shooting, which I guess has to be viewed as a blessing in a situation like this with so many people uh, involved and so many people there. Um, so we know that. We know that people who scattered and went in several different directions as these things started to happen, people got separated from their friends and their family. Uh, because of that, and hopefully by now it is starting to, to calm down, people have started to put the pieces back together, but the challenge has continued to be that people kind of scattered uh, and did not have the ability to get in touch with their families. They lost cell phones and what have you. So if you're one of those people, um, they're asking families to reunite at the Sister Clara Muhammad School. Um, that is right there in the area. Um, so anybody who is familiar with the area, anyone who may have been out there is very much aware of the Sister Clara Muhammad School. Um, we know that there are multiple males, three males and a female, all arrested with weapons, various ages, and we will have all of those details coming up momentarily on the Fox 29 News at 5 and 6. We know that multiple people were shot. At least one of them, a 15-year-old, was shot in a conflict with the police prior to being arrested with a weapon. Uh, we know that five are currently in custody. We are waiting to find out more information on that. So that's where we stand right now. But our reporters are all across the area. They're at the hospital. They're on location. They're speaking to people who were on the scene. They're speaking to family members of those um, who unfortunately were victims or shot in this situation. They spoke to Commissioner Bethel. The mayor was on the scene, so they have comments from her as well. All of that is coming up. All of the details, all of the questions that you have will be answered in just a moment coming up on the Fox 29 News at 5. So, folks, uh, I thank you. One of the things that we are trying to do here, Fox 29, Fox 29 Live, Fox Local is try to keep you as informed as possible up to the minute. The second that things happen, we are pulling the information together. We are always here. So whenever you need us, just check out Fox Local. We are here with the information. It's time for the Fox 29 News at 5. Let's get to it, get you answers to all of your questions.